Karkadosh, Boker Or, I saw a beautiful idea to do with the 22 years. We know that there's a 22 years of Yaakov Avinu that he wasn't with his parents. Remember that he was at the age of 63 when he received the Berachot. He went to 14 years to the Yeshiva Shem Ever for 77. Then he went and he had to work for seven years until he was 84, until he got married to Rachel, which was really Leah. He had to work another seven years for Leah, which was for really Rachel. So that's 14 years. So he was 14 years working for his two wives. Then he was six years working for, for, for money, right? Which is, that was until Yosef was born, the six years. So that was 20 years. And then he was two years on the path. So he was 22 years away from his parents. So and then afterwards, what happened was that also Yosef, Yosef was taken when he was 17 years away. He was taken away from Yaakov Avinu, 17 until the age of 30, right? He was going in front of Paro, because remember, at the age of 17, he was one year in the house of Potiphar, 12 years in jail, 10 years, one for each brother, and two years for what we just mentioned in the previous shiur, the two years because of the Sarah Meshkim. So it's 13 years, 17 and 13 is 30. He was 30 years old when he went in front of Paro. By the way, read the parasha. You're going to see everything that I'm talking about. Everything's there written in the Torah. So he was 30 years old when he went in front of Paro. But now if he's 30 years old, that's only 13 years. You had seven, seven years of blessings because the first seven years when he was in one in front of Paro was blessings. And then you had two years of famine until Yaakov Avinu came down. So 13 until he became the viceroy, seven years of good, of the abundance, two years of the famine, that's nine. So you had the nine and the 13, right? You're going to have the 22 years in total because it was in the second year of the, of the thing that of the... Um, how do you call it? A famine when they came down, when Yaakov Avinu came down. So listen to this. The Gemara Mesecha Berachot Nun Hamul Bet says, Amar Rabbi Levi, says Rabbi Levi, Leolam Yitzape Adam Lachalom Tov, Adesrim Ushtaim Shana. If you have a dream, and this dream is an incredible dream that something good is going to happen to you, you might have to wait. Until when do you have to wait for a good dream? 22 years. How do we know that? From Yosef. Why? Because it says, And he had the dreams. At the beginning of this week's parasha, Yosef had the dreams. Yosef was 17 at the time. When did everything occur? 22 years later. Because it says Yosef was 30 years old when he went in front of Paro. So from 17 until 30 is going to be 13. Seven years of the, of the, of the abundance. Two years of the of the, what we just said now, of the hunger, and then you have the 22 years. So the Siftei Chachamim says, the Kavanah of the Gemara, this is the Gemara Berachot, 55b. So the Kavanah of the Gemara is that until 22 years, a person should wait until the, the dreams actually came true. And that's exactly what happened by Yosef HaTzadik. And that's what it means, Aviv Shamar et Adavar. Aviv Shamar et Adavar means that his father, right, was waiting for it. He was looking forward and waiting when are these dreams going to come to fruition? Okay. Now in the Sefer Nezer Kodesh from Rav Yechiel Michal Migluna, he comes and he said, Hanagat ma'arechet ha'olam, that the, word, the way the world works, nishpa mikuach ha'esim shtayim otiyot ha'alaf bet shabbat Torah. We have 22 letters in the Jewish alphabet. There are 22 letters, alaf bet. And in every single year, there's a hashpa miyuchedet, of one of the letters of the alphabet. And all the other letters are tafel, they're secondary to this one main letter. And then it starts again, right? Again, and it starts every single 22 years. The chalom is going, which means the, kolo, the, the dream is going into fruition. Yeah? So he says in that year, that the hanaga is, according to the hanaga, which was that they actually dreamt it. And therefore they say that a person should wait for 22 years, because if he dreamt it now, now is the dream, but it could wait 22 years until the other letter again of that year comes into place, and then it could come up again. And now we understand the Akdama to the Sefer HaKadosh Menachem Tzion, right? and also the Sefer Mevaser Tov, about Rav Mendel Marimonov, that he says like this, Galui Yadua, it is known, yeah? He says, it's Galuvido, it's known, Sharava Kadosh Ranorah, Harav Minominov, 
He was Doresh Drash Mide Shabbat B'Shabbaton Parashat Aman, Esrim Veshtayim Shana. For 22 years, he was giving every single time he was coming and giving a Drasha. And it says what happened was, is that where there was, right, there was what? There was going to be, there was going to be abundance in the world. Okay, so that's what he's saying over here. Hayal Omazon Esrim Veshtayim Shana. There was Seudah, there was everything. What does that mean? There was Shefa in the world. Meaning every single Shabbat, he was being Doresh and Parashat Aman. Parashat Aman, Aman is the Parashat that they speak about to do with the Manah, the food. So there was abundance in the world. So in order to have the abundance, he was 22 years coming and giving the Drasha on the same topic. Right? Every single time trying to find something new about it, but giving it in order that there should be abundance. And that's what we see also in Avot Rabbi Natan, the sixth chapter. Kalba Savua was called Kalba Savua because anybody that went into his house, he was he went in ra'ev, he went in very hungry, like a dog. And then he used to come out savea, he used to come out savua, right, sage even. And there it says, Ayalo Mazon for 22 years. Right? Ayalo Mazon is slim with time shana seuda lecholechat for every single person. So therefore, we also see another Gemara. The Gemara is in the Sechet Ketubot Membet Amubet, 42b. Amar Rava, Hai Min Takashai Bar Rava Yosef, Esim Vistrat Hashanim. This, there was a question for 22 years. They didn't understand it. They had a question for 22 years. They loi parek, but it wasn't answered until Rav Yosef came and he became the Rosh Shiva and he answered it. So you see from here that again, it had 22 years. They weren't able to answer the question. They waited 22 years and now they were able to, to answer it. So you see that every single year has this hashpa, this type of an influence of a letter. And therefore, only when it came out after 22 years, they were able to do it. The same thing we see in Melachim. And Melachim in Kings 1, chapter, right? Melachim Aleph, Perek Yudalid, Pasuk Kaf, chapter 14, Kal Kaf. It says, Vayamim Asher Melech Yerovam was 22 years. And then he actually passed away. So it says over there, right, that he says, Ulay Shem Kenege Kabet Otiyot HaTorah, Shaya Lomed Ba Vosek Ba Yerovam, Kod Moshe Sarach. Meaning, before Yerovam came, and he went off the path, because remember, Yeruvah ben was a huge gadol ador. He was something incredible. He was learning the 22 letters of the Torah. And that's why he was able to have 22 years of kingship in this world to pay him back for the 22 letters of the Torah that he was learning before he went off the path. And that's the Yisod in the Gimran Sanedrin Kuf Bet Amudet. Amar Rabbi Yochanan. Why is it that Achav was Melech for a Simish time Shana for 22 years? Because he was Mechabed the Torah that was given with 22 letters. Next, Midrash Tadshe. Look how many connections we have with the number 22. There are 22 species that were created in the world during the seven days. On the first day, you had Bayomarishon Shiva, seven. Right? You had the heavens, the earth, water, darkness, winds, the abyss, and light. Besheni. Right? On the second day, Arakiya Bilvar, only the firmament. But you see, the third day, Arba, four things. He put the water in one place. And he brought up the sweet waters from the land of grass and wood and the, the, the trees. Okay? But if he, the fourth day, right? It's Shlosha. The sun, the moon, and the constellations. Right? Next, Chamishi, the fifth day, Shlosha, three creations. Shratzim, the Tanim. The creepy crawlers, birds, and the tanin, the, the, the this is talking about the type of the fish, the taninim. Six day, four, the chayav wild animals, the domesticated animals, the remes v'adam, right? Also, the, the creepy crawlers, or another type of creepy crawlers, there's remasim, there's shatsim remasim, there are two different types. And the adam, the human being, kenege the slim v'shtayim otiyot bet. Parallel in correlation to the 22 letters of the alphabet, just like kenege the slim v'shtayim dorot, from Adam until Yaakov Avin. From Adam until Yaakov, there were 22. Because Yaakov was a pillar of Torah. So there was also 22 generations from Adam and Ishon until Yaakov Avinu. Another place where we see 22. Midrash Shel Kut Shimoni. Ikar Shalvata Shel Sedom lo yaila bet shana. Sedom lived for 52 years that they were in tranquility. They did whatever they wanted for 52 years. 
ומהם כבד שנה יקוס ברוך הוא מריש עליהם, הרים הוא מביא עליהם זוועות, כדי ש... 22 years the Kodesh Baruch Hu was causing them to do Teshuvah. He was bringing them winds and this and that and all these things, right? He was doing all these things to make them do Teshuvah, but they didn't do Teshuvah. We also see it by the, the Teshuvah of David HaMelech, with Ma'asev V'Atsheva. Let Kut Shimoni says, Amal Lefanav Ribbono Shulam, Keshem Shemachat Ali Avonotai Rishonim, just like you were forgiving me for the first sins, Mechol Yvonotai Cholim, so to hear, Kav Pet Shana Nistalka Ruach HaKodesh Vidavim Melech Yisrael. For 22 years, David HaMelech did not have Ruach HaKodesh. And in every single day, he had a course of Dema'ot. He would cry a full cup full. Imagine a full cup full of tears. And he was eating his bread with ashes. As it says, Ki efer kalechem achalti. In chapter 102 in Tehilim, that, that's the, the, the Tehilim of Tefillah Le'ani on the, on the Ta'aniyot. Right? It says that I was eating my bread with efer, with ashes. And that's what we also see in the Sefer Tefillah Moshe from Rabbi Moshe Me'asimbul, right? He says, I heard from my rabbi, right? Rabbi Kadosh, Rabbi, the Noam Elimelech. And he comes and he says like this, that he said, This was the son of the, the Noam Elimelech. He said about his, his father. If you want to know what was the tzava of my father, right? שעשינו שתיים שנה לפני מותו אמר הדברים אלו שבספרו וידעתי שבכל יום ויום היה מצווה מחמת מותו. He already had it for 22 years before his death. So you see from here the 22 years is the זמן of תשובה and הכנה ליום הדין. And therefore it says the משך זמן זה עבר עליו כל המצבים, everything passed through him. And all the types of מזלס and everything until he fixed everything. We also find the גמרא in סנדרין ל"א הולך להכיל מגלה סוד, somebody that's a, a peddler He'll usually reveal secrets. Why? Because he sees what goes on around. And he's a peddler. Why do you, why do you say that the Shonara is called Rechilut? Because it says, Lo telech rachil Don't go around like a peddler. Because a peddler takes from this, goes from there. He comes, he says, ah, do you know, I just went to his house. I just sold him things. But when I went into his house, I saw this and I saw that. And that. Then he goes to the next one. You see this and that. It's called a peddler. So he says, There was a certain Talmud that used to say things that went on in the Beit Midrash after 22 years. After Rabbi Yam, he says, what, you're telling over secrets? He got, took him out of the Beit Midrash. That Talmud, the Imam of showed that after 22 years, it was already permitted to tell a secret. But it wasn't. But he felt that 22 years, that's it, you're allowed to say it over. It's also a Chazal Midrash Tehilim. Amar Rebbe, 22 years, right? The, sorry, the 22 Ashre, which are written in Tehilim. Meaning if you do a word search, how many times it's written Ashre, fortunate, in Tehilim? 22 times. Esrim v'shtayim Ashre k'tiv v'tehilim v'lama, why? A parallel to the 22 letters. Falem u'omer yu l'ratzonu nirfi. What does that mean? What does that mean that we say in Tehilim yutet, but that's what we say after Amida. Yu l'ratzonu nirfi. Right? They should do for generations, write for generations. Not just like some you're reading it. So, so he comes and he says like this. So what are we going to understand? So he says like this. Our service, our work in this world is to put into our neshama and to fulfill the 22 ashrez, which are written in Tehilim. And then a person is going to be fortunate, worthy, like the Gemara says in Yoma Peivav, right, 86, you have to love Hashem. How do you love Hashem? The name of Hashem should be loved in your eyes. Why? Because you have to be right? You have to be coming, learning, and doing shimush chachamim, you have to be very nice to people. What are people going to say? Fortunate is this person that he learned Torah. Fortunate is his father that he taught him Torah. Fortunate is his rabbi that he taught him Torah. And the Tosfot and Erovin says that even though we say, it's good that a person was never created whatsoever, that's Tamani Adam. By a tzaddik, we say, fortunate, and Vashre Dora, unfortunately, is his generation. The Avod Rabbi Natan says, "May at chilato of Rabbi Lazar, Rabbi Yezer ben Olkanos, ben esim v'shtayim shenaya. He was 22 years and he never learned Torah. He once said, 'You know, what? I'm going to learn Torah in front of Rabbi Yochanan Zakai. His father said, 'Right, Amalo Aviv Olkanos, yata toemat she she tachros 
מלא מענה, השכם והחריש מלא מענה. So Pika de Blezis brought down the story, and he says, his father went and he told him, why are you crying? Maybe you're upset or whatever it is of something that happened. He says, no. So he says, so why are you crying? He's saying, I'm only crying because I want to learn Torah. So he went and he did two Shabbatot that he didn't eat anything. Until Eliyahu and Avizah Chulatov came to him and he said, Ben Urkonos, why are you crying? He says, because I want to learn Torah. Amarlo, if you want to go to learn Torah, go to learn by Rabbi Yochanan and Zakai. Go to Yerushalayim. He got up and he ran away to Yerushalayim to Rabbi Yochanan and Zakai and he sat in front of him and he started crying. He says, why are you crying? He says, I want to learn Torah. So he says, who are you the son of? He didn't want to tell him. Because if he was going to tell him he was the son of, uh, you know, a rich guy, he didn't want to tell him. Amarlo, mi amecha lo lamata lo ke... He says, I never learned. No kret shema, no tefillah, bi katamazon. Nothing. He says, stand up. He stood up and he taught them to the three of them. Now we have to understand what exactly went into Rabbi Eliezer, right, that now he's 22 years old. Now he's 22 years old. I was like, boom, ah, what's going on? Yes, he comes and he says he was crying. What was it going to be now that he didn't know the Torah? So the Chidush of Mardal comes and he says, the Gemaran Kiddushin says, Zama l'rava l'rbinatan barami, adedcha al tzavarai devrecha mishitzar v'adesim ishtayim, right? V'amal l'mitim nesre adesim v'arbaa, ketanai, it's a machloket tanaim. Right? We always say that there's a mitzvah of chinuch. Chanoch l'anar api darko. You have to come and you have to educate. When does this work? So one of them said from 16 until 22, and one of them said 18 until 24. Rashi says, when you're still in control of your children, give them rebuke. What is that? From 16 until 22, right? But before 16, he still can't receive rebuke, right? But don't give him too much. He's a child still. But more than 22, he's going to kick you back. He's going to fight back. So don't do it after 22. So you see from here that until the age of 22, you're still going to be a tikva. Okay, there's still going to be a tikva or something like that, right, of, uh, of what's happening. But after 22, very difficult to start having a shpaunim. So according to the Nezer Kodesh, now we understand that after he was already 22 years that he's born, right, he already passed many different stages in life, and therefore he's not anymore like an outside. All of a sudden now he's like uh, somebody that's already older. So therefore he comes and he says, you know what, now he felt he's 22 years old, he says, how could it be that I still didn't? When am I going to start working for myself? And that's also the Gemara Ambam Batra. It says, tzadik. He was in charge of a kupa of tzedakah. Once came a woman during the time of famine. And she said, Rebbe, give me parnasa." He swore, he said, there's no, nothing left in the tzedakah box. She says, Rebbe, if you're not going to give me parnasa, I'm go- she's going to pass away with her seven children. Right? So what did he do? He gave parnasa from his own money. He became sick and he was going to die. The Malachi Asharet, they went in front of HaKadosh Baruch Hu, they said, Ribbono Shalom, right? You said that anybody that saves a Jewish life, right, you're going to come, and you're going, you just saved the entire world. You've made a woman and her seven children live. He's going to die so much, so young? They added on to him 22 years. The Marsha says, why exactly was it 22 years specifically? He says, Shem Nikraim Shanim Muatot Berivka. Because it's written by Rivka that there were 22 years because remember that Rivka told her son Yaakov Vinu, go for a little bit of time. What was a little bit of time? 22 years. Right? Just like Rashi says, Yamim Muatim, when he says Yamim Achadim. So he was there 22 years. So that's what it says. But he says, according to his words though, it says that every single time that they're going to add on to a person's life, it means 22 years Davka. But the Chavetz Chaim in his Sefer Avat Chesed, he comes and he says, it was Davka by Yamim Tzadik, we had to add on 22 years. Why? He says, because in Parashat until Sofa Pasuk Sheni, right, that is also talking about the 22 words. So since there's 22 words in the Pasuk that says that you're going to help somebody out with Parnasa, so that's why you have 22 years that was added on to his life. Just like it says in Sanhedrin, why was Achav Zuchef for the 22 years? Because he went, right, and he gave the 22 mm-hmm. letters, he gave Kavot to the Torah. Okay, that's what's brought down, right, until now. Okay? So now he comes and he says as follows. The Sefer Megadin Chadashim. He comes and he says, this is not going to help. Why? It's a Davar Pelet, something incredible. How many times did they come and they add on, right? That a person was already supposed to finish his life and now they add on specifically 22 years. So the Zohar Kadosh comes and it says that they told Rabbi Yoseh, Esrinu tren sheni no sipu I'm going to add on 22 years. The Kabbalah Yashar Rot Sadikim says that there was a story with the Rizal Kadosh. That they told Rabbi Avraham Levi Bruchim, right? That he already finished his life. 
unless he's going to do a takana, that he's going to teach, right? That they're going to learn as tichye, then he's going to learn, he's going to live for another 22 years. So it says that he told them that he did kadosh, and now he told them for sure you're going to live for another 22 years. And the Hasid, he actually lived after that 22 years. So what is this exactly of 22 years adding on? So there's a Gemara at the end of Rachot Samech Dalid that says, Kol Anything which is pushed off because of the time, the time is going to help him. From Rabbi and Rabbi Yosef. Rabbi Yosef did not want to be the Roshiva first, right? So therefore he says, Rabbi, right, was for the 22 years. And then afterwards was for Rabbi Yosef. What does that mean? Also Rabbi and also Rabbi Yosef were going to be Roshi Yeshivot. If Rabbi Yosef was going to be Roshiva first, he would have died after two years. So he purposely made that Rabba was Rosh Shiva. Rabba was the Rosh Shiva for 22 years. And then afterwards was Rav Yosef. So Rashi says, You're only going to be king for two years. So he says, if I'm going to come and be king for two years, being Rosh Shiva for two years, he's going to die after two years. So he didn't want to do that. So what did he do? He purposely put Rabba first. So it comes out that Rav Yosef lived for another 22 years more than what he was supposed to, right? And he didn't die only because he was supposed to be king for two years, right? And therefore he added on another 22 years, okay? And therefore that's what it means that the mazal is going to add on. So now he comes and he says, this is explanation that we come and we say, right? Because once a person was supposed to die in a certain day, in a mazal ploni, and then for another reason, they come and they add on whatever the case was, they could live for an additional 22 years. And after the 22 years, the same galgal, the same mazal will come back and then he'll have to die the same thing that he died 22 years before. Because according to what we just mentioned, now it makes sense. The 22, every single, these are the letters of the alphabet. Every single letter is in charge of a year. And therefore, if right now he's supposed to die today, but all of a sudden he had an extension. The second he passed that extension, now he could have much more. And now you have the entire rest of the time. Because now that you already added on, it's like the extension was added. Now it's not going to come back that, that time again for another 22 years. And therefore he comes and he says, it was another chidush of the Baal Shem Tov, that he says that somebody that was blessed by the Baal Shem Tov was Osher Rav. So he asked the Baal Shem Tov, Ad matai mazal. So after he went, he said, it's going to be for 22 years. And after 22 years, Bidiyuk, right? It actually changed. And now we actually understand why. Because basically after 22 years, the mazal changes. And this is something incredible of the entire thing of the 22, whether it's because of the 22 letters of the Torah, the 22 years that David Melech did not have Ruach HaKodesh, the 22 years that Yosef was not by his father, just like Yaakov was not by his parents. All these things are the number 22 because of the 22 letters of the Torah that it has an incredible impact right, on everything that we have throughout the Torah.